Hello and greetings. Uh, we're going to try a problem that involves uh, kinematics uh, in more than one dimension. Okay? Uh, and remember that kinematics actually means the description of motion um, using mathematical equations uh, like these. Um, but this time we're going to have a x y and a z component okay I've already uh, taken the liberty of writing some things down but let's dive right into it and um, take a look at the given okay now it's important to read the problem in order to understand fully um, what's going on also it might definitely will help you rather later on as you solve the problem later first of all the object is at rest now, what does that mean? It simply means that the initial velocity is zero, zero i, zero j, and zero k. And if you're lazy, you can write the units there. What that means is that the that units applies to everything that's inside the parentheses. And next, you'll see that the object also starts, all of these are the initial positions by the way, we essentially start at the origin. Okay, that's convenient. What's next? Then we have the acceleration. Now the acceleration is also in three dimensions, actually effectively only two since the third one is zero, the Z component. But if you take a look at it closely, you'll notice that there is no parameter t inside there. Okay, what that makes this is that the x and y and even the z component are actually constant. And that actually allows us to use uh, one of two options. We can use a uh, calculus version here on the left, or we can use uh, some equations that are familiar. But I will actually use one approach other than the other. And last but not least, we have our delta t, our time interval, or you can simply make this uh, your last mark in time. Okay, making uh, your t initial zero seconds. Okay. Our goals are actually finding the final positions. And just to get that out of the way, since the Z component starts at the origin, there's no initial velocity to it at all, and it's not even accelerating, guess what? It's not gonna move at all. It's gonna stay, it's displacing from initial to final will be the same. Effectively making this actually a 2D problem. But let's carry on. Now we can take two approaches, we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus where we're going to have to integrate twice uh, from the acceleration components in order to find the final position in x, y, and z. Or we can use the this equation from a constant acceleration kinematics, uh, one of five formulas that you can use, five or four, depending on which textbook you use. I'm going to use the first method, but as you we do this together, you'll see that these equations actually pop up. All right, now check this out. For the z component, the initial z component is actually zero in the velocity. The acceleration is also zero. So it doesn't even matter that the time goes on for 4.7 seconds, the displacement rather is going to be zero. So that's one down, two to go. So I recommend doing this. I've already written the acceleration value here, the acceleration vector. And I recommend splitting this between the X and Y components. These are kind of like two different problems all together that you're gonna to have to solve. So um, this makes it more uh, easier to do step by step. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is take the X component. And that is in units of 
meters per second squared, I will forgive the fact that you don't have to write the units every single time. But make sure you know which quantity you're actually ending up with as you're doing the calculus. Okay. I will integrate both sides with respect to dt from t initial to t final. Okay. But wait a minute. This component is actually constant. So we can actually take this and put it on the outside of the integral. Okay. And that is all equal to, well, let's write it out. And there we go world's easiest integral. So when you have that, that equals to 3.2 t. And this actually equals our delta v. Okay, but I'm going to take a different approach to this and make this, instead of a definite integral, let's take that as our velocity function. Because this is just our first uh, integration. We need to do one more, and then we're done uh, for this part. So you can see that this one is uh, relatively long. I'm giving myself some space there, we'll see in a bit. And then I have to integrate one more time. I don't need to include the 3.2 anymore. And this is still from TI to TF. Actually, the first one, I probably didn't need to do that. Okay. And on the left side, this is equal to delta x because this is the x component and the 3.2 stays, but now the integrand or the integral becomes evaluated from actually, let's go ahead and put the time 4.7 to 0.0. .0. Now the 0, 0.0 won't do squat, but when you plug in that times the boundaries, that becomes zero. And then you will get something on the order of 15.4, I believe. but different. <laughs> um, oops. I was thinking of the final velocity. You're going to get actually negative 35.344 and uh, minus zero. But I don't need to put that. And it's important to put that, that this delta x actually is xf minus xi. But what is xi? It starts from the origin. So that xi is also 0. So what we have here, this is our answer in the units of meters. But how many significant figures were I given? OK, all of these were in two significant figures, as most uh, problems from certain publishers do. So that means I have to round down my answer to two significant figures. And you notice, and I think I did not have this in my original answer, that that, yeah, it is negative. There we go. Cool. And so that is how you get the x component integrating twice, we're going to do exactly the same process for the y component. Just taking a glimpse of what we're working with. Okay. And then the same process. I'm going to go a little bit faster this time. This is going to turn into the function 8.6t. 
And then from here, I'll take the integral one more time. Don't need to include the 8.6. And this one I'll take from ti, tf, which actually is from uh, eight, uh, from zero rather, <laughs> to 4.7 seconds. And now, but this is actually uh, a y, so this turns into delta y, 8.6 t squared to evaluate it from 0, 0.0 seconds to 4.7. Once again, that becomes 0.7 squared. The other one you don't even have to write down, I'm just writing out for posterity's sake. Zero. And the delta y is y final minus y initial. The y component starts at the origin again. And then you will get um, all these digits. Once again, the units are in meters, but two significant figures. So our answer is 95 meters. And there you go. And once again, a reminder that the Z did not move from its own position at all. because it wasn't accelerating and its initial velocity was zero. So there you go. And that's how you do uh, an example of integrating position twice from the acceleration uh, function, in this case just happens to be constant, um, to get the final position coordinates. Okay, uh, take a look at the different techniques that we use. Uh, you can pause, play and rewind, and hope you all enjoyed. Ciao.